Wednesday morning, the sun was shining, I was in the shower, and in the bathroom with me was my cat named George. Now, George and I have known each other since I was in third grade, and I was struck by the, uh, I guess, realization that in a few short months, George would no longer be at the end of my bed keeping me warm at night because I would be in university. And that gave me pause to kind of stop and think and realize that the changes that are going to be happening within the next couple of months for us as a collective are probably some of the most substantial changes that we've actually faced in our life this far, short of actually moving to a new country, to a new school. Hands up if you were leaving Jacob Hustler next year. If you're going to university or college or to the workplace, one thing I would ask for you guys to, or even just Super 12 with your friends no longer around you to support system, things to keep in mind. As I go through this seminar, I'm going to hand this out, these uh, little sheets of paper up to you guys, and I want you to be perfectly honest and write down one thing that you are scared about in regards to next year, in regards to this transition into your next phase of life. You don't have to put your name on it, just one thought or one fear or something, even if you're just a little bit apprehensive about the transition into this next phase. Now, after this realization that George and I would be parting ways, I realized I need to get my crafting together and start actually thinking about what I would do to handle this transition into university. So I happened upon a book called Canvas Gets Wasted by someone that I am happy to be able to call my friend Blake Flyshacker. Now, for those of you that are not aware, Blake Fleischacker is a, you can look at that if you want, but you don't have to. Blake Fleischacker is an international motivational speaker that specializes in going to high schools and universities to deliver messages about transitions to students in that walk of life. If you've been to OSLC, you may have noticed him giving a talk. He also came and entertained us during JHSS Spark. I made it, managed to make contact with Blake and he is one of the most incredible gentlemen that I know. He's taking me under his wing and served to suit me as a motivational speaker, uh, as a presenter, and I've actually been working with him to deliver uh, a presentation and a seminar with uh, kids that are grade six, seven, and eight across Ontario. If you ever need something, it's actually in his book. He has his email available for anyone that's in our kind of situation that needs someone to chat with. Now, going a step further than that, Blake decided to package all the lessons that he learned in his time as a university residence advisor and published it in a book called Campus Gets Wasted. Essentially, Campus Gets Wasted is an anthology of Blake's stories. He's not reinventing the wheel or splitting the atom in this book. What he is telling you is it's a tangible guide as to how to progress through university. Their little stories on how not to waste your time. Basically, the subtitle is The Life That Exists Between the Books and the Bars. Next year, some of us are going to be extremely busy with our coursework, or some of us may get a little wrapped up in the extracurricular aspects of the university, and Blake encourages us uh, in, in ways of how not to actually waste that. Now, after this Wednesday morning revelation about George, I actually ended up sitting down and reading the book, and I was astounded by the amount of interesting stories that were actually in the book and how relevant they were to people in our kind of situation. And from it, I drew three big lessons about transition, especially as leaders that are going forward in their life. For one, there are, to there are topics that deal with personal transition, there are topics that deal with interpersonal transition, and then there's the transition of your past or your passions. Oh, wow, I'm better than I thought. That's awesome. Cool. They got a slide for that. That's exciting, isn't it, on a Monday morning? So, for one, personal transitions. In this book, Blake speaks directly to how you can make the most of your life on campus. There are three chapters in specific that he discusses how you can possibly do, or make the most, rather, of your campus life. For example, he talks about sleeping with stormtroopers, visiting a poster sale, and building a snowman. Now the last one I thought was pretty interesting because he discusses uh, an evening before an exam that he had in his first year where snow started to fall. And it was looking like it was so voluptuous that it would actually cancel the exams of the next day. And he had to make the decision whether to go out with his other university resident students and fill the snowman and have a good time and enjoy life, or to stay in and cram with the books. Now he made the decision to go out and build a snowman, 
and the exams were canceled the next day, and it was just kind of a cool example of realizing how important it is to actually make these memories, especially when you can in our lives. Like, one thing I'm sure we're all aware is Carson's obviously gone out and started working uh, at BMW, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And that kind of put in perspective to me that whether it's university or whether it's going to BMW to actually work, or just working in general, that our days of doing this is numbered. Being able to sit in the classroom with some of your closest peers, we're going to have something new, something potentially exciting, and something that is so much more real than being with your awesome teachers and being with your friends. This chapter kind of spoke to me and realized that it's okay to indulge the little things. If you like floorball, go play floorball. If you like hockey, play hockey. If you like volleyball, play, or play volleyball. If you're a guitar guy, play guitar. Because doing these little things, indulging these little passions, helps reveal your genuine character. And I realize that's something that's so important with leadership. That authenticity is something that sometimes gets lost in the translation. But if you notice, all the people that are leaders in your life, their genuine nature is something that you can look at, realize as an example, and try to project, or project outward of yourself to inspire others. For example, um, in the past few years, I've established myself as an experienced MC at Jacob Hessler. In grade 10, I got heckled so much from both students and teachers that I wasn't a good MC, that I was a terrible announcer on the announcements. And it was frustrating, but I realized it was something that I needed to stick with it because I liked it. Um, no reason other than that. Uh, Cole, Chanel, Julian, and I started a junior council this year with a bunch of grade nines. It was absolutely fantastic to have these grade nines come out and realize that they were where we had all been just three years earlier, closer to four now. And a lot of them would come up to me like, Bird, you're so good on the announcements, you're so good at MC. I'm sitting there going, I like turtles. Because it really didn't mean that much. I realized it was something about me that I just appreciated and I enjoyed doing. But it made me think about how that genuine nature, that authentic nature, can really inspire the people around you, especially younger students. And that's our, our job as leaders, is to get those younger students into a position where they can feel confident about themselves and potentially even do the same as we have and inspire others. Now, further to that, I'd like to ask you guys to kind of open the forum a little bit. How has authenticity inspired you this year? How has authenticity inspired you this year? It can be with a friend, it can be with a teacher, it can be with an animal because they're fluffy. Something that's authentic, huh? Yeah? Carson. I don't know, just um, like authenticity, just like, uh, I don't know, just doing the things that you want to do, like, even though other people have like their own input on it. Like, a lot of people are saying that they shouldn't be working full time and stuff, but it just, it just feels right, so I go with the and do it. For sure. And that's actually a really good point. People will naysay against you, especially when you're pursuing something that's authentic to you, potentially because it scares them. I know, I personally, if I was told I had to go and work every day for the rest of my life, I'd be like, nah, I'm done. And I would sit at home and I would eat popcorn and Netflix until I'm fat. Like, think Dodgeball, think Ben Stiller at the very end. Maybe I'm thinking you know. It's a hard question. Uh, that? It's a hard question. It is, but in the very same breath, that authentic nature is something that people will look to. And I'm sure you've seen it. You've seen it on YouTube. You talked to me about how you learned to yourself taught guitar player. I know that in itself. That drive you have for guitar is something that is unparalleled by anyone else that I have met in my life. I appreciate it. Kind of thing. You. But that authentic nature, again, is something that people can cling to, can look to. It's that determination. Again, as leaders, this authentic nature is something that's important for other students. And that's just cool. Oh my god. That is about as much authenticity as you can get in a picture. That picture was not approved. Hey, it looks good. It's a pretty sick. It's a pretty sick picture. hot. So, going on, going on from personal transition, we have a very important job that a lot of us would have observed this year, and that's our interpersonal transition as leaders. In the book, Blake speaks the importance of others during transitional times. Now, this is multifaceted for us, given where we are in our life. In the book, uh, Blake discusses how building relationships is a responsibility of a leader. 
Uh, there are two passages called Save Dave and Always Room for Family. Always Room for Family was really interesting to me because he discusses how he only had two tickets to his university graduation. And he did everything in his power to make sure his other family members could actually be there. He didn't let a number of tickets define who could actually be there to support him in his, his, in his transition. Now, our jobs as leaders looks a little bit different. Hands up if you helped out with uh, the grade 11 spark this year. I don't think there are many people. More, okay, perfect. More importantly, who helped out with the grade 9 barbecue at the beginning of this year? So a fair few of us. That's where our job changed again a little bit as leaders, and it was up to us to be the bigger person, to use that authenticity to help draw others in. Now this changes a little bit in when we get to university, because we go from being rather big fish in a small pond to very small fish, like think krill level fish in a very big pond. That's where we start to look to others, other role models, for their input, for their guidance. I experienced this year, this year uh, with Noah Ellis. During OFSA, I was not sure if I wanted to actually go to the competition. I was apprehensive about spending the money, I was apprehensive about taking time off school, and quite selfishly, I was concerned that I didn't want to go on the trip because I didn't wasn't likely going to get court time. You guys probably heard the stories. I'm not the best volleyball player. But that's that. It was really interesting because one day after practice, Noah comes up to me and he's like, hey, Ferg. I'm like, hey, Ellis. He's like, you coming to the office? I was like, nah, I don't know. He's like, pardon? And we had this conversation and it was incredible to have the student that was a year older about something that was essentially as trivial as a volleyball game go, I want you on that bus tomorrow. And he walked away and I realized how important it was not only to be authentic, but to have courage during transition, especially when you're dealing with other students. And I was thinking that it was pretty interesting. And that's not the only picture. There's a lot of pictures of Brett in diapers or Johnny waking out on spirit days or our entire class just showing other students what it's like to be authentic. But it's important to have that courage to actually go and do it. And Blake speaks to that during transition times. So we've established that as leaders, it's important for us to be authentic. We've established that we need to have our courage to project that authenticity. And what a better way to do that than to bring passion into our transitions. And I'm not just saying, you know, like think Italian soap opera passion. I'm talking about that one thing that makes you tick beyond all others. Just in the shameless plug, please make sure that you're writing down any fears or misgivings that you have on that sheet of paper, because I'd love to collect them in afterwards. Blake speaks to the book uh, to uh, bringing your passions with you in the university in a couple different ways. One uh, that wasn't in the book that I've learned from him is about bringing your G string. He does an entire talk about how he's walking through the halls on the first like week of like frosh week with a guitar that he barely kind of play, just kind of strumming notes, and someone calls it like, "Yo, dude, with the guitar, get in here so we can jam." And he realized that he only knew one chord, but he went in and played it, and ended up in a band, and it was just kind of interesting how doing something as simple as bringing something that is your comfort zone with you can help extend your circle to encompass other people. Now, passions are a great way to take your personal skills and interests and involve and inspire others. It'll help break down your walls during transition periods in a way that I don't think can be paralleled, especially by individuals that are in a leadership setting. Now, I may mention before, kind of thing, there are a lot of different individuals that have done a lot of different things to help involve passions into the school year. Whether it be by creating inaugural floorball clubs, coming up with junior councils, or running a Relay for Life event that raises $30,000. Bringing that passion, that spark, that drive into the things that you want to do with your life is an incredible way to involve others. As passions are an extension of your genuine character, so by having the courage to show your passion is a great way to bring others with you. So, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Throughout this year, we've seen several new additions to JHSS leadership, several different things that we've done. Uh, when have you seen someone else use their passion to make connections to others? Johnny Floorball. 
right there. No, you, you came, you and Mitch, right? I didn't know you guys at all came in first semester because you knew you were in this class and you wanted to do something big and to do a floor ball and to do a pattern um, to the school. And, yeah. and so you came early, this was a passion you had, and then you were able to take your passion and get and rally around the school and, and ended up having an awesome event. Really kind of cool, like not to be gush, but like just the way that you've been able to mold a bunch of people is really interesting. And other examples, so um, I think Combo is a really good example of Relay for Life. She told me she was working on it before the semester even started, and she was just a great leader throughout. You know, I went to her whenever I had issues or I just needed direction, and she just kind of like made stuff clear, give me duties, and yeah. For sure. One yeah. thing I thought was really touching is when you would talk about the importance that cancer had to you kind of thing. You could see the authenticity that you had behind those words, the courage you had to actually give those words out, and the passion that was behind it during your life. It was incredible. Any other examples? So again, I think you're a really good example too. Just of like all the effort that you put into the school, like you're doing stuff since grade nine with emceeing and stuff, and you just said that like you got a bunch of flack, you didn't really care, you kept working at it. Yeah, I'm just freaked out. You're like on top. You went from this <laughs> lost for my life. That you just kind of uh, there. I don't know the amount of times that I've asked, how am I co-pres? Because you know, it's just it's been an incredible experience. I but I'm realizing that. that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, it's honestly, like, anyone else in this room probably could have done just as good a job as I did. Like, it's not that hard. I do. I do. It. Anyway. All right, Josh, thanks. So. <laughs> oh. Ooh. That's not touching subject at all. With, with Candace Gets Wasted, these translate, or with these transitions kind of thing, the, the big three that we, the big three, no. big three things that we can take away from it, because I'm trying to time crunch for you, Mac. Do my best. Um, putting it all together, be authentic. Have the courage to project that authenticity, and then use your passion to draw people together. Transitions as leaders, how do we handle them kind of thing? Now, there, there are two decisions that I think a lot of us can make next year. We can kind of sit back and ride out this transition as best as we possibly can, or we can take the skills, the bonds, the knowledge, the experience that we've made in this year, things just relay, with things such as running into her spirit, things just such as just building positive relationships. And you can bring that with you and use this grade 12 leadership university leadership class as a jumping off point and to continuing your, your development as a person. Leadership is, I, I realize this semester, so much more than just running an event or, or running a fundraiser. It's about the development of yourself and your relationships. Now, real quick, because I have one final quote that I really want to get in there. In other words, slow down, smell the roses, be kinder, be genuine. Good luck with your transitions. Thank you so much.